I've talked an awful lot about the model context protocol or MCP over the last couple of videos and done a lot of work with it in React. Now I'm going to do it in React Native. We're going to go and build this Mac OS application using React Native for Mac OS, which is probably something you've never seen before. I know I hadn't. We're going to then have it attach to an MCP standard IO protocol server and make requests to it. It's really cool. Let's get right into it. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is create the React Native app using the React Native Community CLI. It has to be this 0.78.2 version. That was the only one that I could get it to work with. The React Native Mac OS stuff is still very nascent, but it's great. So this is the version we need to use. I'm not going to install CocoaPods right now. I'll do that later. Now I'm going to bring this directory up in cursor. All right, there are two directories in this project. Of course, all this code is available to you for free in a link in the description right down below. There's an MCP server. That is a recipes MCP server. We're going to connect to that in just a little bit. And then there's the RN MCP project that we just created. So the first thing we need to do is add the macOS target to this project. So to do that, we're going to use MPX and then React Native macOS init to initialize this as having a macOS target. All right, now it's giving us some instructions. I'm going to ignore those for the moment, and we're just going to go and start editing this. So first thing I'm going to do is get rid of the Android and iOS directories. We're not going to build this for Android or iOS. We're going to make this a macOS application because macOS has the ability to launch command lines like this MCP server, and that's how MCP standard I.O. servers work. You launch them as commands on the command line. Next thing I'm going to do is make some adjustments to the package JSON, get rid of the Android and iOS versions, and I'm going to add Mac OS to run React Native Mac OS as well as pod install. All right, let's give this a go. So I'm going to need two terminals running simultaneously here. So I'm going to put them side by side and then pod install. Just got to get that set up. Once I've done that, I can do npm run start. That's going to start the Metro bundler. And then over here, I'm going to do npm run macOS, and that's going to build our macOS application. We'll get to see it. Okay, there we go. Lots of dots later. We have our RN MCP application, a little boot page here. That's really cool. This is a React Native macOS application. Now, one thing it can't do is actually run a command. So we need to extend its native functionality. So we're going to actually go into the macOS project and add some Swift to our project. But before we do that, I want to talk about today's sponsor, and that's Infinite Red. Infinite Red is my favorite company when it comes to React Native. They are the OG React Native consultancy. They have been doing React Native since the start. Anytime I have questions about React Native, I go to them and I ask questions about this very video and got help from jamming on it. So thank you so much to the folks over at Infinite Red for helping out. Big companies, small companies, lots of companies have used Infinite Red to help them make fantastic React Native applications. Go check out their use case page. It is amazing. They're also a huge part of the React Native community. They run React Native Radio, which is a podcast where you can learn about all things React Native. It is awesome. You should subscribe to that today. They run a fantastic conference right here in my hometown of Portland, Oregon. It's called Chain React. I had the opportunity to talk there last year. Maybe I'll get the opportunity this year. Really excited about that. It's a fantastic conference. It's one of the few React Native conferences. It is a must go to, and it's just a great React conference, and it's in a great place. So come and check out Chain React. Infinite Red is also a fantastic sponsor of big open source projects like the Ignite framework that helps you get your React Native applications off the ground with all of the tooling necessary to make a really high quality React Native application. I'm telling you, Infinite Red are the folks that I trust when it comes to React Native. <laughs> and this project in particular, they were super helpful. Thank you so much to them for sponsoring this video. Now, as we get back into adding native functionality to our React Native application, if you get lost along the way, you are going to want to talk to the folks over at Infinite Red to figure out how to do it for your project. OK, so let's go over into our file explorer. And we're going to look in the Mac OS directory. So I'm going to bring that up in the finder. I'm going to go into that directory. And then I'm going to bring up the Xcode project for RNMCP. So what we want to do is add in the Swift code here. And what that's going to do is bind it into the project. It's going to let Xcode know that that code is there. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a new group. 
I'm gonna call it MCP. And in there, I'm gonna build a Swift file that's gonna have our MCP client. And I'm gonna choose not to build a bridging header. I'm gonna instead create my own Objective-C to do the bridging into React Native. Now I'm gonna bring in our Swift code. We're gonna create a class called MCP client, and it's gonna have one function in it. It's gonna allow us to run a command. It's gonna take a, an array of arguments that's gonna include like the command as well as any arguments and it's gonna have some input. Now the input is gonna go into the standard input of the process that's created. That's how standard IO MCP works. We actually run the process and then send standard input into it and take standard output out of it, and that's how we communicate with it. And all this code essentially just does that. We run the command, then we put in some data, then we get the data out of it, and then we marshal that back up to our React Native code. All right, now let's go and create our bridge. So this one, I'm going to create an Objective-C. So I'm going to use the .m extension for that. And this one is just going to use some Objective-C macros to tell React Native that we've got this MCB client Swift. All right, I'm going to hit Save. And then I'm going to get out of Xcode. I don't, long, don't need that anymore. Now over in our project, we're going to go create a native modules directory. And in that, we're going to go create our MCB client. And this is going to be the TypeScript adapter that connects to that native code. All right, now the first thing it needs to do is bring in native modules and platform from React Native, and then it's going to specify the TypeScript version of the interface that we just created. We got a run command, it has some arguments, and the input that we're gonna send into that process. Then we're gonna actually go and connect to that and get back na the native MCP client reference. And, and then we're gonna specify a client module, and that client module is then going to have this run command that then fires off to that native MCP client run command. All right, now the next thing I wanna do is figure out what command we want to run. So in our case, we want to run node, and I'm going to give it the absolute path of the script that we're going to run. And this is kind of what you'd see in your MCP configuration for your MCP client, right? You'd see a whole bunch of these. We're just going to go and connect to just one. And the first thing we're going to do is get a list of all the tools that are available in that MCP server. To do that, we're going to start by defining an array of the tools that are available. And then we're going to create a function called get tools. And get tools is an asynchronous function. It's going to run that command and then make a request for the list of tools and then give us back an array of the available tools. Now we cache that, so we just return it if we already have it. But if we don't have it, we're going to use that MCP client module to run that command using that native code, and we're going to send it a JSON RPC 2.0 request. And that method of that request is tools list with no parameters. Hey, just send us back the list of the tools. So let's actually see that work. Let's go over here and we'll go into our command line. So I'll create another terminal, we'll do node, we'll get our arguments, paste that in there, and look, it's ready, I guess? So let's do what the code is actually gonna do. So I'm gonna paste in that JSON RPC command. So there we go, JSON RPC 2.0, tools list, let's go, and we get back a result that tells us that we have one tool, the name is get recipe, and then it has an input schema, and that input schema tells it that it has a name, the name is required, and that's the name of the recipe that we're gonna go get. So let's request a recipe. Now, if I look at the MCP server over here, we can see that there are some recipes available. We got recipes for stromboli, as well as pizza and pasta. So let's go and ask it for the pizza recipe. So I'm gonna go back over into our terminal and then paste in the tool call for get recipe with the name of pizza. So the method in this case is tools call, and we give it some parameters, which would be the name of the tool, and then the arguments, which in this case is the name of whatever recipe we want, which is pizza. And let's hit it and see how we go. And there we go, we got a decent recipe for pizza. Actually, I haven't tried this pizza out. It's whatever the AI gave us. Seems pretty reasonable to me. So that's how MCP works. So let's go over and add on to our MCP client. We already have the ability to get tools. Let's add the ability to run a tool. To do that, we're gonna create one more function called call tool. It's gonna to take the name of the tool to call as well as the arguments. And just like before, we're gonna run that command with those arguments. And then we're going to do a JSON RPC 2.0. But th this time the method is tools call with the parameters that we just specified. And then we get the result back, which is gonna be JSON. And then within that, we actually have some more encoded JSON within the content text that we got back. That's just specific to this particular MCP server. The MCP server that you work with might have just text as the content. In this case, the output is actual JSON. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna build a chat interface, and that chat interface is going to connect to Claude, 
and it's going to give Claude a list of the tools that are available to it. And then when Claude tells us that we are supposed to invoke a tool, then we're going to do that on behalf of Claude. So the first thing we need to do is create a connection to Claude. So I'm going to go and set up a key file. It's got my key in it. I'm going to call that API key.ts. I'm going to put in my key. It's obviously not this, but I'm not going to show you what my key is. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, because we're using TypeScript, is create a type for message. Now, when you talk to an AI, it's really just an array of messages going back and forth. And in, in this case, the messages are just between the assistant, which would be the AI, and the user, which is us. There's an ID in there sometimes. And then there's content. And the content can get a little bit tricky because we're actually going to have some content that is like an array of different parts of content that come back, like tool invocations or just flat text. So it's a fairly complex little structure that we send back and forth with the AI. All right, now let's go and create our AI interface code. So I'm going to create another file in here called AI.ts. What's going to actually connect us with the AI? So to connect with the tools, we're going to bring in call tool and get tools from the MCP client that we just created over in TypeScript land, which again is going to talk to the native stuff underneath the hood. Then we're going to bring in that API key as well as the type of message that we just created. And we're going to create one function called run AI. And that's going to, we're going to give it a list of messages. So the first thing we want to do is get that list of tools because when we call Claude, we're going to want to say, hey, by the way, if you need to get recipes, then here are the tools that are available to you to get those recipes. And that's what's in that tools list. So let's create the function that's going to call it Claude. It's called call AI with tools. And it takes the array of the messages to send. That's our conversation so far. It then pulls out just the role and the content from those messages. Claude's really sticklery about the message format that you send in. If you send in IDs, doesn't like that. Then we're just going to do a fetch out to Anthropic. It's going to be a post. We're going to give it our API key as well as the API version. But what's really important is the body that we send along with it. We're going to say that we want to talk to Claude, give it a nice hefty max tokens, and then we're going to give it those messages that we just stripped out the IDs from. And notice we're just giving it the name and description and the input schema of the tools. We're not actually giving it any way to execute those tools. That's because Claude isn't actually going to run the tool. We're going to do that within that MCP client app. It's going to ask us to run the tool. We're then going to run it and then give it back the data as a JSON element within that messages array. Once you made this call, we're going to get back the response JSON that's going to give us a single message back that might have multiple parts to it, including that tool call. Now, to handle all that tool calling, we're going to create another function. This one's also called call AI. It's going to take those messages to send, and then it's going to create a new array that has the messages already in it. And it's actually going to keep on adding into that array in a loop, as we call call AI with tools, the first time. Then we see, hey, is it actually sending us back an array within content? And does that array include a tool use? Because if it does, then we're going to want to call that call tool. It's going to give us the name as well as the input, which would be the parameters. Then once we get back the output from that, we're going to want to go and add that to the messages as a tool result with that ID that was coming in from the tool use. Then we recycle the loop because we want to give the AI an opportunity to analyze the results of that tool call. But if there is no tool call, that means that it's done. So we can say that we're finished and we want to break out of the loop. So finally, we're just going to return the output of that call AI with those messages. And if it doesn't work, then we're going to put an error in there. And there you go. All right, now we've got our connection to Claude and AI, and we've got our connection to the MCP server, and we're getting our tools. Now we just do need to put a UI on it. I'm going to use Native Wind, which is a React Native port of Tailwind for that, but I'm not going to bore you with the installation. Of course, all this could be able to you in that GitHub link, and you can see how I did it over there. I'll see you in a second after I've installed Native Wind. All right, I've installed Native Wind, and everything seems to be working, but of course, I haven't actually used any of it. So I'm going to go over here and we're going to replace out the app.tsx. Okay, looks like it's actually running, which is awesome. So I'm going to ask it for the recipe for pizza. All right, well, my first question actually didn't result in a tool call. So I went for something more specific. So Stromboli in this case, and it actually made the tool call and got our Stromboli recipe. So there you go. Absolute end-to-end -end AI to MCP running on React Native for macOS. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this look at React Native on macOS, talking to MCP. Of course, all the codes available to you in the link in the description right down below. In the meantime, if you like this video, hit that like button. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell and be notified the next time a new blue-collar coder comes out.